with handhelds always getting faster, there's the ever-present worry of overheating. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus does a great job of cooling, but what would happen if we were to make that even better? Well, today we're going to do just that. This AMD cooler is rated up to 65 watts, so I think it should do a remarkable job at cooling the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Regardless of the results, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to check out. This has been a question on my mind for a little while now, but let's see what happens when we put a PC cooling solution onto a handheld. If it's good enough for AMD, is it good enough for Retroid? Let's take a look. Obviously, there's a few things that we need to sort out before we connect this to our handheld. This has a standard PC fan input, and we can't use that obviously on the device. That's where this handy adapter comes in. This adapter allows the fan to be powered by a USB. Since the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus only has a Type-C input, we have to use this adapter to connect the fan to it. Obviously, this setup isn't going to look pretty, and it's not practical at all, but it'll definitely get the job done. Using these adapters also means that the fan isn't going to run at full speed. If we take a look at the back of the heatsink, you can see that there's already some thermal paste applied onto the back of the copper. Now that we have everything we need, let's get started. Obviously, the first thing that we need to do is to remove the back plate off the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. If you want a full tutorial on how to disassemble this unit, I'll leave a link to a guide in the description below. We also need to remove the black heat plate over top of the SOC. This is relatively simple and there's only a few screws holding it down. With the back plate off, you can see the heat plate over top of the SOC. Before we put a CPU cooler on though, we're going to check with a standard fan just over top of the SOC to see how that improves the thermal performance. Obviously this fan is way bigger than any fan in a handheld could be, but it's definitely going to show us what it's like in the best case scenario with a little bit of airflow over top of the SOC. With multiple tests run, the temperatures definitely cap out at around 72 or 73 Celsius. It's definitely still a little warm to the touch, but we've gone down from 85 so that's a nice bump down. I also don't see any CPU or GPU throttling. With a fan of this size though, I definitely thought I'd see better cooling performance. I think we're definitely going in the right direction though, so let's try the CPU cooler next and see how that performs. Because of the edges around the device itself, we can't actually put this directly on top of it. If we rotate it sideways, the screws do go over the edge, but unfortunately there's still a little bit of a gap between the plate and the heatsink. Therein lies our first problem, how was I going to get this heatsink to fit on top of this console? Well, there's definitely a way and I'll show you how to get that over top of this. If you look at this on the side, you can definitely see that big gap that I was talking about. There's definitely no way that this is going to fit directly on there. The solution though actually came with the console itself. If you look at the heat plate that they gave with console, it actually comes in two pieces and that second part actually provides that depth that we need. That means that the bottom here is going to sit on top of the heat plate directly above the SOC and all we have to do is to remove these four screws to get this side off. For the thermal paste, I'm going to be using some Arctic Silver 5. This is all I have available on hand right now. Regardless, this is excellent paste and it should do nicely. When applying this, I'm just going to put a line straight down the center. Thermal paste is non-conductive, but I'm going to be careful here because I don't want any spilling over the edge. All I have to do now is just put the heat plate on top. Tightening these two screws here should spread the paste out. Let's go ahead and do that now so we can proceed to putting the heatsink on. I'm going to give that a little push down here to make sure it's spread out. Now I did put the heatsink on there and you can see it's definitely making direct contact which is really good, that's what we want to see. Putting that heatsink directly up against the unit itself, you can see that that heat plate is doing a good job at filling out the space between the two. Now all we have to do is just connect that and make sure that everything's in place. Thanks to the miracle of elastics, attaching the heatsink was pretty easy. Now all we have to do is to connect the fan directly to our device. Obviously, I don't recommend doing this to your Retroid Pocket device, or any handheld in general. I am going to have to find a way to prop up the fan though, because it's directly on my desk here. As you can see, luckily the device is turning on, and the fan does seem to be working. The fan obviously isn't running at full speed, but it's getting a decent RPM, and I think it's doing a good job of cooling it. Overall, I'm just trying to be really careful with how I'm holding this. 
I've left this propped up on my desk for a little while now, and you can see it's barely hitting 55 degrees. PS2 and GameCube emulation definitely seems to be where this processor heats up a lot. Regardless though, this is about 30 degrees improvement over the stock configuration. If I push the device down subtly here, you can see the temperatures drop a few more degrees, so it's probably not sitting completely flat against the heatsink. Luckily though, one more elastic easily solves that issue. After running multiple tests, I can tell you that the 15 minute mark is definitely where the temperatures start to peak. The screen itself is actually only warm now, so it's definitely helped that too. To put that into perspective, we've gone down from 85 down to like 51 or 52 Celsius. That's a huge drop in temps. Once we pull off the heatsink, you can see, yeah, the thermal paste didn't spread all the way to the edge. I definitely think there was a little bit of a gap in there, and I probably should have used a thermal pad. Overall though, the results speak for themselves, and I think regardless of how this worked, it definitely was fun to try. Luckily for us, a lot of AMD's stock heatsinks are really good. With that all off now, let's clean off the back of the heat plate here and get it back together. I've been really careful with how I've done this, and I don't recommend anyone try this to their units. Overall, I just wanted to see how this would work, and I didn't want to make any hard adjustments to my unit like cutting the shell. At full load though, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus does a pretty good job at keeping the temperatures below 85 Celsius. Moving forward, I hope to see more active cooling on handhelds in the future. Looking at the size of this heatsink right beside the unit itself, you can see that this thing is absolutely massive compared to this handheld. Putting a cooling solution of this size into a handheld is obviously not practical, but I think it was a lot of fun to see kind of where it would sit. The size of the fan is about the same size as the screen, and despite using the other fan earlier, having a bigger heatsink seemed to help way more. I'm curious to hear what you all think about the cooling on your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is so far. I generally only ever play upwards of Dreamcast on my unit, and because of that, I've never seen my temperatures go over 55 degrees Celsius. It's going to be interesting to see how Android cooling evolves over the next few years as handhelds get faster and faster. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you had fun.